In a previous video, I connected the micro bit to um, a logic analyzer via the I squared C interface. So today I'm taking that a bit further. I've connected up this um, this little board here to I squared C, and I'm going to experiment a little bit with programming the micro bit and reading some of the stuff on this board. So this this board this is called the uh, PCF eight five nine one, and it's an analog to digital board, so A to D board. So it's got four channels. It's got four four inputs, and uh, it turns the voltages that it sees into a digital format, so that the micro bit can understand it, and. So let me talk a little bit about in more detail about what's on this board. Looking a little bit more closely at the board now, we can make out the components on it. So here we've got this is the main chip, the PCF8591, the four channel A to D converter. Um, there are some inputs on this side that I'm not using. There's uh, this is the connection to the micro bit here, so uh, you might just be able to make out here that says SCL. So we've got the S SCL and SDA, which are the lines for the I squared C bus, and then here we have the power, so the three volts and the zero volts, which is used to uh, power this board. So on on this board, there's a power LED to show you that it's on. That little black thing there is a thermistor which can detect temperature and return uh, temperature as a as a voltage. The LDR or light dependent resistor is a little piece of silicon that can change its resistance when you shine light on it and uh, so you can use it as a light detector basically. So this this produces a resistance in relation to the light and we can measure that resistance using the PCF8591 and then we can capture that inside our micro bit. And then we've also got a variable resistor so this um, is connected to another one of the channels here and you can you can turn this up and down and you can detect the resistance again using the 8591 chip. And this is quite nice there's some little jumpers here so if you leave the jumpers in place, then the resistor and the LDR and the thermistor are connected to the chip. But if you pop the the jumpers off, then you've got four four analog channel inputs here. So you can connect four external voltages into the board. So this this board is actually the same one that I used in the uh, potting shed in my wife's potting shed. So recently I put up a video showing some of the sensors that I fitted to the shed which allow me to measure temperature and barometric pressure and so on. So I've, I have another one of these PCF8591s um, in the shed connected to various sensors. That's in use with a Raspberry Pi which can also use the I squared C bus directly. And these boards are really nice because they I bought two of them at the same time and they cost about a pound each. So they're really, really very inexpensive to experiment with. What I've got set up here today, you'll see there's a number scrolling across the display on the micro bit here. Actually, that number is a reading taken from the LDR. So uh, at the moment that says 92 because we're in quite bright light. But if I put my finger over the light sensor here, 95, 220. So it's now reading 220, uh, two, 219. So it's now reading over 200 because the sensor sees dark. So the resistance of the, of the LDR reduces as uh, as light hits it. So if I then reveal it again, 219, 92. So the, so the 
the light level goes right, right the light reading goes down to 92 and if I if I go even further if I shine a torch on it maybe we can get it to go even lower so there you go 29 so that reads tw uh, 29 or 30 when I've got the torch directly shining into the LDR so if we look a little bit more about the characteristics of the LDR if I were to draw a graph of resistance versus light so we have resistance up this axis up the y-axis and here we have light along the x-axis then the LDR looks like this which basically means that if we start off here which is quite dark in the dark the resistance of the LDR is is fairly high but then as you increase the light what happens is we follow this graph down here and we end up up here so when the LDR is well illuminated the resistance is now fairly low so let's have a look at the program that I used to talk to the PCF8591 and how I did this. So this is a development tool that I'm using at the moment. It's a code editor called Mew, which runs under Windows. And here I'm using uh, and here I'm using Python to write the program in. Um, mainly I use Python because some of this uh, I squared C functionality isn't fully finished on all of the tools so so I'm today I'm using Python and so in mu here we have a code area where you can write the Python code that's going to be flashed onto the micro bit and here at the bottom this part here is called the the REPL and uh, or read, evaluate, print loop, I think it's it's short for. But the REPL is basically a, a command window. So you see at the moment, I'm printing out the values of the LDR. And if I put my finger over the LDR again, you'll see that instead of reading about 90, it's now reading 217. So this is a live printout of the LDR value. And if you look up in the Python, this is how that's being done here. So every time around this loop, that so I've got a loop that goes on forever here, while true. And inside the loop, I'm reading one value with this function, read LDR, which I've defined up here. And I print the value out. And I'm, I'm also using this dis display scroll, which puts a message onto the screen of the micro bit. Um, and I, I can actually show you that live in the REPL. If I stop the program here with Control C, so I've interrupted it and it's not running the program anymore. Now I can do display dot show. And if I put a star in there, like so, you'll see the star appears on the screen of the micro bit there. So it's quite a nice tool, this Mew, because it allows you to directly interact with the with the micro bit. So you've got the cable plugged into the PC here, and you're able to dynamically issue commands to the micro bit and see the, the result. So if I drop out of that with control D, so it's now running the, the program again. So if we look at the definition of read LDR, we'll see I'm doing some things using I squared C. So in this case, I do a I squared C write and 48 is actually the 
I squared C value that corresponds to this PCF 8591. So I'm writing to 48 and here I write the value 0 which basically means selecting the LDR because the uh, LDR is port 0. I think the thermistor was port 1 and the variable resistor was for some reason port 3. So using this value, writing a different value to the PCF8591 allows you to access a different piece of information on the chip. So having selected the address of the device I'm interested in, I then do a read again from 48. So I'm reading back from the PCF8591. And here the second parameter there, 2, that means 2 bytes. So I'm reading 2 characters from the PCF8591. And if you look at the data sheet, the correct way to read the PCF8591, when you change from one channel to another, is to read a value and then th throw, throw, throw the first value away and then read a second value, which is actually the, the number that you're interested in. So here I'm reading two values, but I only return the second one. So this LDR is a, an array of two bytes. Uh, index 0 and index 1 and I'm just returning index 1 which is actually the real reading of the LDR that I'm interested in. So that's basically it. So it just spins around in this loop reading the LDR and printing out the value on the on the display and also showing me on the on the REPL here at the same time. So this is actually a really great way of experimenting with the micro bit. It allows you to experiment with different pieces of hardware. So perhaps if I illustrate that with another example. If I were to break into the program again and I should be able to read back the value from the variable resistor. So let's play with the variable resistor. If I turn it all the way to one end to begin with, and then I'm going to do I squared C right to the 8591. And I, this time I'm going to put a value 03, which I think is the variable resistor. And then we'll read back the values. Let's read back one byte. Uh, so that should be the value from the port I was just reading. So I re read again to get the variable resistor. And that says zero. So you see. I've wound that all the way down to one end and it gives me a reading of zero. So if I turn it all the way back up the other way now and do another read. And now it returns FF or 255. So that's the, the turned up to the maximum and it's returning the maximum digital value, which is 255. So if I put it somewhere in the middle, it's about the middle. We should get a value somewhere in between. And there we get, well, it's <clears throat> rather unhelpfully says W. But if I, if I read that, so if I print H of zero should work. There we go. So that shows 119. So 119 is approximately halfway between zero and 256. The, the exact midpoint would be 127, but you can see it's approximately in the middle. So thanks very much for watching this video. 
I'm going to put all the links to the to the various things in the text below. So I'll put a link to, uh, for example, where you might buy the 8591. And I'll leave a link to the Mew code editor that I've been using so that you can experiment with it if you want to also. Um, also, this this device here, this edge connector, the uh, Kitronic, um, Kitronic edge connector I found really useful because it breaks out all of the pins on the on the edge of the micro bit so that you can connect things to all the different pins. So here I've got these are the power pins where I'm getting the power from and this is the I squared C interface the SDA and SCL connectors so it's these are these are really quite useful and you can buy this as a ready-made unit or you can also buy it as a kit and solder it yourself which is in fact what I did because it's a, it's a little bit cheaper but thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed it or found it useful at all uh, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel Thanks very much.